Welcome to Bookworm Gardens. We are at the Pond Gateway. Here we have Magellagot's Pool. In Magellagot's Pool, there are our beautiful koi fish swimming happily. Look carefully and you might see a frog. Across the pond is make way for ducklings, with Mama Duck being followed by her little ducklings. Here's another duck, the story about Ping. Ping is a playful duck who likes to explore by the river. Finally, here is Cloudy with the chance of meatballs. Hello friends, welcome to the garden Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. We're having some wonderful sunny weather at Bookworm today. Weather is the air all around us. It can be sunny or cloudy, windy or rainy. Weather can be many things. In the story, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, there's a town that experiences some very strange weather indeed. Let's take a look at this book. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, written by Judy Barrett and drawn by Ron Barrett. We were all sitting around the big kitchen table. It was Saturday morning, pancake morning. Mom was making orange juice, Henry and I were betting on how many pancakes we could eat, and Grandpa was flipping the pancakes. Seconds later, a pancake flew through the air, headed toward the kitchen ceiling, and landed right on Henry. We all laughed, even Grandpa. All the other pancakes landed in the pan. We ate all of them, even the one that landed on Henry. That night, Grandpa told us the best bedtime story ever. He said the flying pancake made him think of it. Across an ocean, over lots of huge bumpy mountains, across three hot deserts and one smaller ocean, there lay the tiny town of Chew and Swallow. In most ways, it was like any other tiny town. It had a main street, stores, houses, trees, gardens, a schoolhouse, about 300 people, and some cats and dogs. But there were no food stores in the town of Chew and Swallow. They didn't need any. The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was its weather. It came three times a day at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything that everyone ate came from the sky. It never rained rain, and it never snowed snow, and it never blew just wind. It rained things like soup and juice. It snowed mashed potatoes and green peas, and sometimes the wind blew in storms of hamburgers. Every morning, people watched the weather report on TV to find out what they would eat that day. They would even hear a prediction for the next day's food. When the townspeople went outside, they carried their plates, cups, glasses, forks, spoons, knives, and napkins with them. That way, they would always be ready for any kind of weather. If there were leftovers, the people took them home and put them in their refrigerators in case they got hungry between meals. By the time they woke up in the morning, breakfast was coming down. First, there was a shower of orange juice. Then low clouds of sunny side up eggs moved in, followed by pieces of toast. Butter and jelly sprinkled down for the toast, and most of the time it rained milk afterward. For lunch one day, Frank Burters and Rolls blew in from the northwest at about five miles an hour. There were mustard clouds nearby. Then the wind shifted to the east and brought in baked beans. A drizzle of soda finished off the meal. For dinner one night, there were lamb chops, becoming heavy at times, with occasional ketchup. Periods of peas and baked potatoes were followed by gradual clearing, with a wonderful jello setting in the west. The sanitation department of Chew and Swallow had to remove the food that fell on the houses and sidewalks and lawns. The workers cleaned things up after every meal and fed all the dogs and cats. Then they emptied the leftovers into the ocean for the fish and turtles and whales to eat. Life for the townspeople was delicious until the weather took a turn for the worse. One day, there was nothing but gorgonzola cheese all day long. The next day, there was only broccoli, all overcooked. And the next day, there were Brussels sprouts and peanut butter with mayonnaise. 
Another day, there was a pea soup fog. No one could see where they were going, and they could barely find the rest of the meal that got stuck in the fog. The food was getting larger and larger. One Tuesday, there was a hurricane of bread and rolls all day long and into the night. There were soft rolls and hard rolls. There was white bread and rye and whole wheat toast. No one had ever seen such big slices of bread or such large rolls before. It was a terrible day. Everyone had to stay indoors. The mess took the sanitation workers four days to clean up, and the sea was full of floating rolls. To help out, people piled up as much bread as they could in their backyards. It stayed there and got very hard and very stale. There was a storm of pancakes one morning and a downpour of maple syrup that nearly flooded the town. A huge pancake covered the school. No one could get it off, so they had to close the school. Lunch one day brought 15-inch drifts of cream cheese and jelly sandwiches. Everyone ate themselves sick, and the day ended with a stomach ache. There was an awful salt and pepper wind, followed by an even worse tomato tornado. People were sneezing themselves silly. The town was a mess. There were seeds and tomato pulp everywhere. The sanitation department gave up. The job was too big. Everyone feared for their lives. They couldn't go outside most of the time. Many houses had been hit by giant meatballs. Stores were boarded up, and there was no more school for the children. So they decided to leave the town of Chew and Swallow. They had to. The people made rafts out of the giant pieces of stale bread glued together with peanut butter and set sail for a new land. After sailing for a week, they reached a small, friendly town. They built houses for themselves out of their rafts. The children began school again and the adults found jobs. The biggest change they had to make was getting used to buying their food at a supermarket. Nothing came down from the sky except rain and snow. The clouds above their heads were not made of fried eggs. No one ever got hit by a hamburger again. And nobody dared to go back to Chew and Swallow to find out what had happened to it. They were too afraid. Henry and I were awake until the very end of Grandpa's story. I remember his goodnight kiss. The next morning we woke up to see snow falling outside our window. We ran downstairs for breakfast and ate it a little faster than usual so we could go sledding with Grandpa. It's funny, but even as we were sliding down the hill, we thought we saw a giant pad of butter at the top and we could almost smell mashed potatoes. The end. That was some very strange weather, wasn't it? How would you like to live in a town where food fell from the sky? Let's see what's falling from the sky today in Chew and Swallow. Are there any of your favorite foods falling from the sky? Could you make a whole meal out of it? What's the weather like where you are today? Whatever it is, go outside and enjoy it.